What's up, fellas? So, uh, I figured I'd use my little computer program here to show you what I've learned about the uh, letter cams. I know you've seen in our videos about the uh, the crap talking going back and forth about letter cams and how they suck or how they don't suck or look what they do and this and that. Um, I ain't got any hatred on letter cams. They're not, you know, I think if you're going to build something, build it right, you know, that you can, uh, as best you can, you know, if you're going to spend money for parts, obviously there's a, a range of money you can spend. Uh, but, you know, I don't hate on letter cams. I've had them. The, uh, the B cam isn't terrible. It's not like some people want to preach about it being like the best ever and all that. I know that's blasphemous, blasphemous and lightning's going to strike me down, but, um, it's not terrible. But you know, usually you can find them for a hundred bucks. So, like I said, you know, it's not a it's not a bad thing to run, but in, it depends on the combination, and that's something I always preach about. You know, get your parts so that they work together, not work against each other. So, uh, and as far as this computer program, it's it's actually pretty decent. It's an Engine Analyzer 3.3 or Pro Engine Analyzer Pro 3.3. I've had it for a long time. And it's it is pretty accurate. We use it, um, or I use it, I should say, to model stuff to see how they'll work out. And uh, using this, and then comparing what it does on the Dino Johnny's, they're pretty close. Um, but again, the Dino, um, you know, it's a tool just like this is the Dino, the tool, the torque wrench, the air. Flow bench, I raise, a sawzall, all of those are tools that you use to get a certain number at the track. And that's the final judge or the final uh, measure of how well you're doing is the ET slip at the track. That's why we do this stuff. So that's that's the whole point in doing this is just to uh, show you what I've found about these. And I use the B cam as a, because it's probably the better of them. Uh, the F cam I measured. And the lobes are a little slower on it. That's why I guess the turbo guys like them. I haven't measured an X cam. Uh, so I don't know how the lobes are on that. Supposedly it's like the B cam only has more lift. And if it's got more lift, maybe the lobes are a little faster. Uh, usually the the uh, Anderson, or not Anderson, uh, Bullet. Bullet does the cams for Anderson. But uh, Bullet cams on their master cam lobe library thing it says you know that the slower lobes are for rpm and horsepower the cams that have faster lobes will tend to make more torque so the b cam they're kind of in the middle of the range for like speed the uh the the can the lobes on the uh the cam that uh what is it the xc274 that holder always talks about they're pretty aggressive so make sure you got good springs if you run them but if you know i think if you if you're gonna get a cam, you want to get a cam. Don't just buy anything. Use a cam that'll complement your combination. That'll be make you less aggravated. Uh, so anyway, I've got this this cam or this engine. It's just a plain old 302 short block, stock short. I've got a set of um, GT40 heads that are ported. Uh, I've got a second gen Performer RPM2. Got one and three quarter header, three inch exhaust, and then I'm modeling a B cam in here now. This engine is going to go into the 88 GT. My youngest son, he's over in Pensacola now. Uh, he was bugging me about uh, thinking about getting a project car, and he says he starts talking about like old Trans Ams and Firebirds, and I was like, Jesus Christ, dude, don't get one of them. Here, I'll help you out. We'll, so he's getting going to give him this 88 GT. We're going to start working on it this year. And then this engine is going to go in, and I've already got everything for it, so I can put that together. But right now, what I wanted to do is show you the uh, the B cam and how it com how it will compare to like a a more or ideally suited cam for a combination. So, like I said, the B cam is in here. These are all the duration, the specs, and I got the spring set up for it. So I'm going to let it run. Hit calculate horsepower and it'll start. It starts in a range that I specified from uh, 2,000 2000 RPM to 6,500 RPM. 
And then while this is running, I'll stop this, and then I'll just make the next clip will be after, after it's done. All right, so it's done calculating. So we get 358 horsepower, 5,500 RPM. We got a range or average horsepower, 256. We got 363 horse torque at 4,500 RPM, and the average is 313. So the one knock against the letter cams, the B cam especially, I don't even mess with the E cam. I ain't gonna talk about that one. So it gets, uh, it's got 59 degrees overlap, and it's got a uh, zero degrees overlap at 50 thousandths valve lift. And this is what the uh, sheet looks like. It'll be the most current one is the green one. I'll get rid of that other one so you ain't confused. But it carries up, you know, fairly decent. You could run your shift point probably past 6,000. I know the horsepower peak is here, but it's still carrying here, so you could run your shift point past, you know, 62, 6,300. It should still work pretty good. It's still making decent torque up here. That's the long runner intakes. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. But that, again, like I said, it's all in your combination for the car you have. And the one knock against the against the uh, letter cams is this right here. You got lobe separation, you got, but you got all that area between your intake and exhaust. So what I would do is go like this. So you had 107 as your intake center line and then 117 is your exhaust. So if I move the, roll the intake back to 109, roll the exhaust up to a, 115 then I only got three degrees advanced and I haven't done anything else with it and then I'll run the calculation again and I'll shut this off again because this takes like two minutes and you'd be even more bored than you are right now all right so we're done calculating we got 361 horsepower and we got a uh, average uh, horsepower of 258 over that rpm range we got 362 foot pounds of torque at 4500 and 313 foot pound average and I add the last one on here okay so the last one's a green one the horsepower and then the red one was the first one so you see over here because your intake center line was it's going to be a little more at the rpm at the lower rpm because your cam was advanced but up here it's going to make you know that much more power so it picked up uh Five horsepower at the peak same with the torque carries it just about the same same curve just a little bit different so what I'll do now is take that out take the B cam out and I will put in this this cam I have it's a um, marital aids coming out and I will get my cam that I have it's 216 226 Got to go through all this. I know it's boring. But these are the lobe numbers right here. 3,006 on the intake, 3723 on the exhaust. Still got good numbers here. I'll put the right ones. This one you can set up your, uh, your spring rate and your valve train weight, like for your uh, valve hardware and the valves. I didn't know that at first, and I was always having wouldn't pull over 5,500 RPM. So then I, on the, you know, the calculations. So once I learn how to do all this stuff, it's makes it a lot better. So that's a 109 intake, 115 exhaust, kind of like what the B-cam with the mods to it. And I also have uh, 165 rock arms. I got Co uh, Scorpion 165 pedestal mounts. We're gonna put in it. And that is that, and we'll let this run, and then we'll see what it does. All right, so it's done its calculations. You got 361 horse at 5,500 RPM, 261 average, and 369 foot-pounds at 4,500, 319 average. So it's got more torque on it, definitely. The lobes are faster. Got 51 degrees overlap, negative one at 50 thousandths. And on here, you'll be able to see, see right here, the dark blue and the green are the, the last run. But you see all that area back here? 
all that extra torque you got and the same with the horsepower right at the very top it's almost uh, dead even it still carries out a little bit so you can still run your shift point pass peak um, so that's just that's just a different cam like I said it's this is even uh, considered smaller than the B cam because remember the B cam is a 224 duration at 50 thousandths and then it had a 133 degrees at 200 thousandths so this one has 216 and it's got 141 degrees of duration at 0.200 and then the exhaust lobe is 226 and it has 147 degrees versus the uh, the B cams 133 or 136 excuse me so it should be uh, you know that's just because the lobes are faster it'll make more torque now uh, about the EFI and what I say is when you get it buy the parts for your combination so if you had um, if you had a you know a convertible with 355 gears and 373 or 373 gears whatever an automatic you don't want to be buying a single plane you don't want to be buying a big cam for it. you want something that's going to make good torque because that's what your combination is if you have a light car and a high gear you know you got a car that weighs 2700 pounds you got a 456 gear well then you can take and get rid of your uh, long runner intake take your rpm off and get get you like a Victor Jr. like that. Add that on here. Now I'll let we'll let this run and I'll show you what the difference is. You'll see it's pretty pretty remarkable. Alright guys, in an epic display of below substandard even. Um, I put all the clips together, the previous clips that you know from all the other runs on a computer program. Put them all together and then uh, use Filmmaker, I think it's called, and it kind of like puts them all together and then it loads it to YouTube and I didn't even look at it at all. I get on YouTube and I go to watch it. You know, that's when I do the <laughs> check it out, make sure it wasn't garbage but or more garbage. But anyway, uh, something happened with the last clip. It didn't, uh, it didn't play. Even though it showed like a chunk of a or a block or icon or whatever in the uh, in the on the phone, so um, I took it back off YouTube and then I'm gonna redo this one. But it was just to show the difference from uh, going from a long runner intake to a short runner intake, like a single plane. And you can see how much better it did up here, and then it lost all of this in here. So. Um, that's illustrating the difference between a long runner intake and a short runner, like I said, a single plane. So obviously a stealth would probably be a little different, but the idea being a long runner will help make torque. And it's, that's why I say it's important to uh, think about what you're doing. If you got a convertible, like I mentioned, with an AOD, this is gonna be your RPM range here. Yeah, it's gonna show on a dyno, it's gonna say, yeah, I made this much power. But you're going to lose all this in here. If you got a light car with a T5 and 456 gear, say you race an eighth mile, you're going to spend most of your time like right in here. So this is where, and especially up here, you can run that shift point out past 6500 if you wanted to. And this is, like I said, it's a ported Explorer heads, uh, the mild street cam. That's you know pretty fairly mild, and uh, a Victor Junior. So. It's all in a combination of what you do and all your parts you use. Make sure they complement each other. Make sure they work together and not work against each other or, or crutch the other and so on. And sometimes it's worth it to uh, pay to get a cam. You know, like you get one Bullet or, you know, Anderson. They sell, they got some, you know, like they're not ideal. Uh, Flowtech Induction will do one. Buddy Rawls will do one for you, or Bullet will do one specifically for your combination, the intended usage, all that stuff. So, it's and it's the difference between 
a hundred dollars to three hundred and sixty dollars that you'd pay for a different uh one for your combination so again like i said there's a range of money you can spend always and uh just because you spend the most don't mean you're going to go the fastest but it always helps to have all your parts that work together that'll help out uh make you enjoy the car more at least you know like i said if you got the wrong parts it ain't going to be bad uh fast for you at the track it ain't going to get good mileage it ain't going to be fun to drive on the street and so on it can be a lot of downside to it if you don't have the right parts so that was what i was trying to convey through this uh <laughs> and aside from uh not having a the whole section on the uh on the video while i was trying to figure out what happened with that emmy brings in a squirrel that she had killed into the kitchen and alice starts screaming and uh, so I had to go get rid of that for her. And this is the LTD. It's in the garage on jack stands. And that's a whole bunch of pollen on the car, even though it's the just in February. And those are engine parts on the car. But I'll be talking about that probably this weekend. I'll fill you in on what's going on with this thing. But uh, my main thing was just to show you that about the engine parts and the car part. You know, get all your stuff working together. I thought that was be worthwhile for you all to see my views on it. All right. Appreciate y'all. Later.